there are different kinds of altars. Like Gideon, there are some altars that we inherited from our parents. Like Solomon, there are some that we have raised knowingly or unknowingly. And like Elijah, there are some that were raised without us knowing and they are against us by the people that we have not offended. So whichever the case may be, in this video, we are going to be looking into types of altar and how to pull them down. Welcome back. So today I want us to look into altars and their effect upon our lives. Some of you may not agree with me that you actually have an altar that is disturbing you. But I want you to open your heart and your ears to these teachings so that you would understand that there are altars responsible. Things don't just happen. Whatever thing that happens in the physical has been controlled in the spiritual. And some of these altars are responsible for why a lot of people are stagnated. Some of these altars are responsible for why you have that terminal diseases. Some of these altars are responsible for why some people just don't live to certain ages in their family and people begin to die. Some, when they get to certain ages, they begin to have a kind of disease that would eventually lead to death. To some people, it's delay in marriage, delay in breakthrough. Some people are supposed to be very, very rich. Some people are financially blessed by God, but some of these altars will hold on to the money that is meant for you. If God should open your eyes spiritually to see that you were actually blessed by God on your way coming to this place, but the Prince of Persia has held all the things that are supposed to be yours and they have refused to give them to you. But well, thank God for Jesus, some of us had to run to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now remember, all of the things that you're going to be doing here today, if it will require for you to go on some days fasting, please do. If it require that you would go on fasting to make sure that all of those things are effectively done, please do. You don't want to confront ancient altars already filled up with food. You want to engage in some fasting and some prayer proud to the day that you have made up your mind to destroy this altar. So after praise and worship that you're very sure that the presence of God is here. If you need an encounter, like I said in my previous video, if you need an encounter, please go ahead. Make sure you get this encounter. If the presence of God is not revealed to you via this encounter, please don't go further. Continue step one until the presence of God is established. Like Gideon. Gideon waited until he had an encounter. Until he made sure that the presence of God is with me. Before he went ahead to break the altars. Number two. Ask for the court to be seated on your behalf. Let everyone sit and let the God of Israel be the judge that is going to oversee the sitting in this courtroom. According to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 7 from verse 9 to 10, Daniel 7, 9 to 10, you would see how the courtroom is being established. I'm going to say, Father, let the courtroom be established and let my case be presided over by you, the righteous judge. Then number three, surrender your right to the self-representation of the son. So like in the real court of law, you don't want to be the one standing and speaking for yourself. You need an advocate, right? So this is the way it is. Let the Lord be your advocate and stand right there. Surrender all of your rights to him and let him advocate for you. And the scripture that you're going to be using is in the book of 1 John, 1 John 2, 1 to 2. And it says, my little children, these things are right to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the father. Jesus Christ the righteous and he himself is the propitiation for our sin and not for ours only but also for the whole world. So you're going to say I surrender my right to you. Every altar, every attack, every witchcraft attack in my bloodline that is responsible for what I am currently going through. Father advocate for me in this court. Remember you have established a courtroom. So you want to speak to your advocate Jesus Christ now. Plead my cause. Fight for me in this battle. 
I must not lose it. And you cannot lose it, trust me. Then number four. So now your advocate is going to go ahead and summon every evil altar, every idol on the altar, every worshiper of that altar. Summon all of them to appear in the courtroom. They have no choice. They have to appear in that courtroom. So when they appear, it is time for them to be judged. In the book of 1 Corinthians 6 verse 3, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 3, the Bible says, Know ye not that we will judge the angels, we the believers will judge the angels, and much more those demons. Father, I summon them and begin to judge them on my behalf. Every demon, every altar, every witchcraft, every enchantment, whatever demonic activity that the enemy has leveled against me that is affecting me and my family, Today, let them be judged in this courtroom. So in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, he says, For this cause was the Son of Man made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, Father, let their works be destroyed. Whatever thing they have leveled against me on this altar, let it be destroyed. This altar that they have raised, either it was raised on my behalf, either it was raised by my forefathers, or I have unknowingly, unknowingly raised this altar myself or someone that does not like me has raised this altar. Whatever the case may be, Father, let their works be destroyed. Number five, agree quickly with the accusation of your adversary. You know, in the court of law, when you're facing the judge, they ask you, the first thing they want to ask you is guilty or not guilty. So you want to plead guilty so that you just don't flog this matter any longer. Say, I am guilty, my Lord. And listen to this scripture. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 25, it says, come to them quickly with your opponent at law while you are with him on the way to court so that your opponent does not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard. Then you are thrown into prison. So you have to come into agreement quickly. Guilty or not guilty, I'm guilty, my Lord. So your case is being taken over by the advocate, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Then as soon as you pleaded guilty, see what happens. Number six, quickly repent. Whatever sin that the devil is using as a legal ground to haunt you, whatever sin that the enemy is using as an opportunity to grab you and put you down, put you in a prison where they have created for prisoners, Whatever sin that the enemy is holding on to to accuse you, you know the devil is the accuser, accuser of the brethren. So whatever he is using to accuse you, this is where you quickly come to terms with that sin. Renounce them and repent. So number six is repentance. You want to repent of all of these things. Is it necromancy? Is it spell, casting of spell, burning of sage? Whatever thing, card, tarot card you play, all of these things, all of these activities open up your souls. All of the things that you do in a way to quickly achieve what you have been asking God for and it looks as if it's delaying. The devil will look at you and give it to you as a bait and you will quickly grab them because they look good. And the moment you begin to practice all of these witchcraft activities, you are exposing your spirit, soul and body to demonic attacks and now you're back to Jesus Christ, right? So repent. So this is where repentance comes in. Number seven, appeal. Now, you know, like I said earlier in this video, we are looking at the law courts to be able to break these demonic altars now. So you are making an appeal. Remember, we have an advocate. We have a high priest who knows what we feel, who knows what we are going through in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ now. So you want to appeal. So how do you appeal? I appeal with the blood of Jesus. That blood that speaks better than the blood of Abel, you can appeal with that blood. That is why the Bible says lawful captive. So I agree that I'm a lawful captive. I deserve to die. I deserve to be punished. But the blood of Jesus has given me ransom. So we are getting close. Number eight, you want to ask the court, to dismiss the case so jesus is our advocate right here and we have appealed with the blood of jesus so he has paid the ransom for our sake so jesus can go ahead and dismiss the case case dismissed so there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in christ hallelujah 
case dismissed now number nine this is the main deal and you want to tell god father dispatch your angels let them go ahead and destroy these altars on my behalf the truth is some of these altars are not even physical some of these altars are not the ones you can see physically some of these altars were established in the spirit realm and they disturb you in the physical so you want to send the angel of god to go right there to destroy those altars on your behalf god the father the son and the holy spirit are involved in this case so angels will begin to go as fast as possible to destroy those altars but 10 you want to ask the father you want to appeal to the father to give a divine restraint orders using the angels and there are a couple of scriptures i want to share with you that you should write down numbers 23 23 says for there is no enchantment or omen against jacob nor is there any divination against israel as the proper time at the proper time it shall be said to jacob and to israel what has god done amen so this is one scripture Another scripture is Exodus 22, 18. Exodus 22, 18. You shall not allow a woman who practice sorcery to live. He says, suffer not the witch to live. That is what KJV says. So all of these scriptures are what you are going to be using as restraining order. Divine restraining order. You are going to say to them, there is therefore no enchantment against me. There is no more, no divination, not anyone against me. Every power that the enemy has been using to torment me. From today, there is a restraining order. There is a divine restraining order. Hallelujah. So it is simply saying to the devil, it is a no-go area. All that you have done, you have done by faith. All that you have done, you have done by faith. So you are going to believe with your heart that all of the things that are happening now are destroying these altars. Remember, by faith, all things are done. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I'm going to say, Father, I decree and I declare by faith, I receive divine restraining order. And let them also receive divine restraining order. They will no longer intrude into my territory. They will no longer disturb my children. They will no longer disturb my spouse. They will no longer disturb my household. My bloodline has become a no-go area for them. So that is a restriction order. Let me tell you what happens in the spirit realm. Whenever they remember that divine restraining order and they intend to hurt you, when they remember it, they run elter skelter and they begin to take to their heel. Hallelujah. So they run away from anything that has to do with you because there is a divine restraining order. So lastly, pray to God to seal the verdict with the blood of Jesus. Father, seal this verdict with the blood of Jesus. In my bloodline, in my lineage, never will they disturb me anymore because it is sealed. God has put a verdict upon it and he has dismissed the court. They cannot appeal. The court is dismissed. They cannot appeal. According to the book of John 8, 36, John 8, 36, he says, whosoever the son of God is set free, is free indeed. That is our verdict. So that is the verdict that you should present to the devil. This is what God has said. He has put a seal on it. So all ye altar from my father's house, all ye altar from my bloodline, all ye witchcraft activities that have been in operation in my life, in my bloodline, there is a verdict today. Whosoever the Son of God is set free, is free indeed. And I am free in the name of Jesus. And I pray for as many that would come to see this video, that you will be free indeed in the name of Jesus. Every altar, every power, that is leveled against you, every accusation that is leveled against you. Today, we plead the blood of Jesus as ransom in the name of Jesus. Today, let the blood of Jesus begin to set you free. He says, whosoever the Son of God is set free is free indeed. You are set free. We destroy every altar of stagnation, every altar of delayed marriage, every altar of financial setback, every altar of 
retrogression and demotion. Every altar of sickness, every altar of untimely death, we destroy them now in the name of Jesus. Let the power of God begin to set you free. Let the power of God begin to set you free. The Bible says in the book of 1 Kings, when Elijah was to destroy those altars, after destroying the altars, Elijah instructed that all of the prophets of Baal too be destroyed so that there will be no rebuilding of this altar. I pray today, every prophet of Baal, every demonic prophet that is currently in operation on those altars and they will want to rebuild those altars that we have destroyed today. Let them be utterly destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let your power put an end, O oh God, to their life and their activity. In the name of Jesus, we are set free. The blood of Jesus has set us free and we are free indeed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. If you have not subscribed to our channel, I beg you subscribe. Turn on the notification. It's so important. If you subscribe and you don't turn on the notification, it's of no use because you won't be notified when we upload new videos. And as you subscribe and share this video, the Lord will bless you richly in the name of Jesus. See you in our next video. Shalom.